there's a, a lot to cover in a short hour and a half period or hour and 55 minute or 25 minute period so but uh, we're going to get us get us started here so we'll call it to order at book 605 um, if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, Carrie, if you could call the roll, please. Certainly. Council Persons Dupre? Not here. Higgins is not here. Kelsey? Here. Ross? Here. Salcedo? Here. Tobin? And Mayor Carnes? Here. They're back. This is unusual, and that is a uh, half hour longer than we uh, usually call the meeting, so I'm going to say that is the, the culprit. Uh, the person of this person, the reason for this, this meeting is a study session on the water system improvement plan. For those of you that have been um, following us, <coughs> you know that our water loss we've been dealing with is uh, approximately 35 percent. Uh, a lot of that, or a good portion of it, is due to the fact of we have water main breaks, uh, the other water loss that, that we are not uh, aware of. So this has been a priority for the last, I think, year. As to, to identify where the losses were, we have made some some improvements, but in the end, determined that our aging system, our water system, is uh, not up to the task. There was a a, a a plan in the early 90s in which a, a section of uh, Lincoln Park had been redone, and as wouldn't you know it, that that is the place where we have the fewest number of water main breaks. That's what we're, we're here to uh, talk about today. We're going to start with our city manager, uh, James Gretan, has a presentation for you, and we'll get underway. I, so we have uh, Mr. Bear and Mr. Zor with us as uh, council candidates. Um, we invited everyone that uh, was in the race to, to be part of this. Um, and that's why it was scheduled for even for the outgoing members um, had the benefit of, uh, of our experience and then so that you guys know what you're walking into if, if you uh, are get elected mm -hmm. so with that I'll turn it over to Mr. Krasan. Yes, thank you mayor. Um, so as you so eloquently put uh, the city has been experiencing significant water loss significant water main breaks over the years and it it's becoming clear that the water system has essentially reached the end of its its useful service life and needs to be updated um, so I, I've put together some information here we've had a, a whole team for the last year looking at the issue and specifically the last um, the last few months really digging in and really putting together all the information that you're going to see today which you know we couldn't do it without our, our partners everywhere um, so, just a quick background here, you know, we're an older city, much of the city was developed before 1960, um, and with that our water infrastructure was developed before 1960. Our water mains have an average age of approximately 80 years old. Considering that these are cast iron pipes, um, with uh, an expected lifespan of between 75 years and 100 years, really based on when they were installed. The older ones actually had a better lifespan than the newer ones. Um, you know, right there, we're, we're reaching the end of our useful service life within the system. Um, as these pipes have aged, they slowly corrode. Corroded pipes become brittle and are susceptible to breaking. A uh, couple quick things here. Water pipes tend to break. Um, two major things happen. Uh, the freeze and thaw of the um, winter season causes ground shifting, which causes the mains to break. Uh, but also there's, there's a phenomenon called a water hammer, and this takes place when changes in pressure essentially shoot, um, shoot sound waves 
through the water system, causing vibrations, causing breaks. And that's a very base level understanding of it. Um, but water main breaks are something that are very costly to repair. Um, just some uh, some evidence here. Last couple of years, 2020, we had reported 80 main breaks. 2021, 120 main breaks. As of August, we were at 141 main breaks. So as you can see, the, the system is exponentially getting worse. It's costly. Um, we've got the cost of labor to repair, materials to repair, cost of restorations once the repairs have been done, um, and then of course the water loss that comes with it. All these things come with a cost. And, and not to mention um, whether we do it in-house, out-of-house, we found that the, the total cost for doing them are pretty comparable, but they're significant both ways. Um, according to estimates, mo our water main breaks cost the city about four hundred or $4,480 on average for the material and restoration cost. That doesn't even include the cost of water loss. Um, for those who aren't aware, water loss at its base level is water that's purchased or pr produced by a system and isn't able to be sold to the customers either through leaks or unmetered, um, unmetered water. Uh, water loss is really problematic for a water system and can be extremely costly. Uh, a couple things that can attribute to water loss, unmetered water usage, water leaks, main breaks, um, and also water theft. All these things add to the, the water loss. Um, in our system, uh, for every about 10% of water purchased that isn't billed to a customer, it costs the system about $251,000 annually. Um, and as our system has aged, we've seen the water loss continue to grow. Um, currently, we're in the 35% range pretty consistently the last few years. I think even this year, we're, we're trending in that, in that direction as well. Um, so thinking about that, you know, you're talking <laughs> just shy of a million dollars a year of water loss cost. <clears throat> um, and right there, we... Uh, with 114 main breaks on average the last three years, the city spends about $500,000, a little more than $500,000 annually to repair these main breaks. So with the, the water loss cost, the water main break cost, we're looking at essentially $1.4 million annually because of the age of the system. This represents over an entire mile of water main annually that could be repaired. It also represents about 10 new DPS workers or the potential for water rate decreases. Not only is there a financial cost, but we also have a public safety and a public health cost and risk with water main breaks. Um, when we, you get a significant drop in water pressure and you get down to a dangerous level of water pressure, the chance for bacteria to enter the water system is there. Uh, this leads to what you often hear of, of the boil water advisories that get placed. Boil water advisories are done as a preventative measure. I don't know if anybody's ever really been a part of one. They're extremely, um, extremely inconvenient. Um, I was I was part of one actually this summer on a vacation in in Tennessee when we had to go through a boil water advisory for I think three of the three of the days we were there. It it's really inconvenient, but you know again there's that public health risk that's there. Also, drops in water pressure carry significant risk to fire suppression systems and commercial buildings. Um, these these suppression systems, often the sprinklers, um, they require a, a, a certain level of pressure in order to operate effectively. Um, and also to even be up to code to operate. Fire department also relies upon um, a consistent water pressure for them to be able to fight fires once they've taken off. Um, they, they get this water pressure for their hoses through the fire hydrants, which is connected to the system. Um, so while we have an old water system um, and we haven't done a ton of replacement in it, that we did have 
We did have a, a reasonably major program back in 87 to 1990, um, which spent about $8 million to upgrade the system. And actually, some of the, the charts up there, you can see where those upgrades were take, had taken place. Excuse me, James. I'm sorry, but the audience can't hear us. Yeah. Interesting. Is that any better? Yeah. All right, beautiful. <laughs> well, I was done. on the feedback loop earlier. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. So we did 1987, 1999, we did have a pretty significant program. Um, but since then, uh, we had a very long stretch of time where we didn't do any upgrades. Uh, recently, we've begun uh, doing about one one mile of, of water main per year. Um, but at this pace, considering we've got 130 miles of water main in the system, it would take two lifetimes to replace the system. Um, with the current escalation of the deterioration and the current issues we're seeing in the system, this, this pace is unsustainable. Um, so to combat this, we're going to first start with the first two years uh, where we're going to be implementing a more aggressive program. This is our, the, the funding has already been approved by this body um, through the use of ARPA funds. Over the next two years, we're going to replace approximately five miles of water main at an estimated cost of $5 million. Um, the sections in these two years that are going to be replaced are those that have experienced the most sig significant number of water main breaks over the last five years. This should help reduce uh, the system maintenance costs, hopefully reduce some water loss, and, and get us on track a little bit. However, we need, we're going to need to do more. But so for the next, for the first two years, 2023 and 2024, we have seven, seven main stretches of water main we're going to do. Uh, these include Gregory, Buckingham, and Pagel uh, in 2023, London, Richmond, Merrill, and Stewart in 2024. And all of these sections are from Dix to Fort Street. Now, this is a great jump start. And it's gonna gonna certainly help. However, more is needed. Um, if we don't do any serious action beyond this, the city is gonna continue to experience an additional 28 uh, water main breaks every year, according to estimates. This represents continued costs in our system. By the year 2029, if we don't do anything, the city can expect to have 307 water main breaks per, per year, which would just in labor, materials, and restoration, and not counting water loss, represents just shy of $1.4 million a year. So it's clear the only real option we have is to do something to, to try and, and increase the amount of upgrades per year. Um, I, I've been using the term lately, crisis point. I think that right now the city's water <coughs> system is at a crisis point. Um, so we're looking to, to replace approximately six miles per year over five years, um, and we'd be able to replace nearly a quarter of the system. This would help, help find significant savings from water loss, cost of water main breaks, which can then be reinvested into the system over the next 20 years. Um, however, to do this, it's going to require a, a massive influx of cash into the system. We really only have a couple avenues by which we can do this. The first one is to increase water rates, which would set up essentially a pay-as-you-go system, much more costly on an annual basis. And then once you've done the, the, the projects, your, your, your rates are much higher than you need. Um, We'd also have to raise the rates to an unacceptable level at this point, to a point where the water system and, and the water bills would be unaffordable for residents. Another option is locating various grants. This is something the city and our engineering firm consistently do on an aggressive basis, but the amount of funding needed 
is not likely to be covered by grants. The other, the third option is is financing the project, um, which for those not familiar would require us to uh, take on debt over a longer period um, and essentially spread out the cost of this pro project over a number of years. Help us have a, a lower annual cost and make it more affordable for the city to do. Um, the two main ways to do this that we have for the system is going to be either through a revenue bond. Um, this, this is an option because the water system does produce its own revenue through rates. Um, and so we can secure the, the, the bond on a pledge that, on, of the revenues. Um, however, this would require the city's rates to be at such a level that not only does it fund um, the annual costs of the system, the annual debt costs, but we'd also have to raise rates to a point where we can fund a bond reserve account, which would be about one year's worth of debt payments. I think that would make the, the make that option a little too expensive, uh, which is why we s we're starting to look at this other this other option, which is a voter authorized general obligation bond. What this would do would make it so that we would have the authority to levy a specific millage to cover the debt payment um, for the bonds over the life of the project of the project and then the debt. Um, Based on advice from our financial team, um, estimates were created to take a look at, at the cost of bonding over three different scenarios. Um, looking at a 20-year bond, 25-year bond, and a 30-year bond. Um, just a couple quick things on that. The, the shorter term of the bond is going to carry a, a smaller interest rate for those who aren't aware. Of course, investors who, who are going to tie in for a long term, they're going to want to see a higher higher uh, result on their bond. So a 30-year bond, you're going to see a higher interest rate than you would with a 20. Um, so with that information, I put together the following table that's on the, the presentation here that shows kind of a, an expected cost. Um, looking at the millage that we would need for the first year of the bond, millage, the highest millage we would require, the last year's millage, and then what we would consider the, the average rate over the course of, of the bond. I've also put in there, uh, to make it a little more accessible, um, the cost per year for somebody with a home whose taxable value is $60,000. So if you look at the table, a 20-year bond, and this is assuming a four and a half interest rate, which we're hoping is going to be high. Still, we're still hoping that we might be able to get into some revolving fund loans that would be um, less, right? Um, but at four and a half percent interest, a, ta a home with a taxable value of sixty thousand, you're looking at a range uh, between eighty dollars and sixty-four cents per year, up to at the peak. $170.91 per year. Um, so then 25 year, you're looking at a range of 85.12 all through to uh, 148.77. And then on the 30 year, you're going to have a range from the first year to the, to the peak of 89.60 to 133.97. What you'll find is, is financing over the longer term will result in lower annual payments. However, the higher interest rate, the longer term is going to result in overall higher costs um, over the life of the, of the debt. Uh, I, I, would, I would recommend, and I've been, I've been kind of recommending right now, the 20-year bond. Um, because we're gonna once this program is done, we're gonna still need improvements, um, and we're going we're not gonna want to have the debt hanging around the, the city for too long. I can understand that might be more aggressive than we we ultimately decide to do, and we might decide to to try and keep the the, the bond payments a little bit more affordable, um, but. I mean, the, the, the positive to going with a 20-year is that once you've, you've only got about 13 years after the project is done, that you're still making payments without actually seeing results, right? 
Um, so that's the presentation I have right now. We have um, we have our, our team from Hennessy here who have put together some some information and some drawings on on where we would be looking at doing repairs, um, some comparisons. I had uh, just in the ninety four or the eighty eight to eighty seven to ninety. How was that funded? That was funded the, uh, through a tax author, a voter authorized general obligation bond. And how long was the duration of those? Shoot, I should have. Hang on, I've got that written down. Um, I believe that was a fifteen-year bond. Looks like series one was fifteen, series two was fifteen. So we were paying it off for about twenty years. And how would these payments? Would the citizens be making them on the water bill or mm, they, the taxes? They would be part of the uh, taxes. Okay. Councilman, go ahead. Um, I'm just I'm just curious because if we're going to take this the section that has most breaks in it and we're going to work on that section, uh, what are we doing contingency wise to look at what's going to be happening in other sections once that's repaired? Because we're still going to have main breaks. So we're still going to have the costs. We might not have as many, but we're still going to have them. So we've got to be prepared right. to take care of those. So how are you looking at that and all those costs? So these first two years are hitting the, the two worst sections. After that, um, I'll let our, Hennes our Hennessy team kind of present the, the planned program because we will be hitting a significant portion of the, of the city. Of course, we're not going to be hitting all of it. Um, talking we're, a we're talking about a quarter. Um, thankfully, the 87 to 90 program is going to help um, because if, if you look at the charts over there, those are the areas where we have very few water main breaks. Um, of course, we're, it's going to take time. Um, I think if we can continue to pour that one and a half million additional into the system after this project, we can continue to do roughly a mile and a half every year additional to what we've been doing so we're still going to be able to be more aggressive on on the water main replacement which will eventually lead to replacing most if not all of the system it just will take time how long are we still talking 20 30 years from yeah you're still I mean, you're talking 130 miles of pipe even if we even if we had 200 million dollars right now to do it it would take I mean, this, this section that we're talking about doing right now, how many miles is that going to cover approximately? We're going to be, I think, over the life of this project at about 30 miles. 30 miles, so that means 100 miles of city <coughs> that still needs to be brought right. up. And we have to be mindful that that's going to be a cost to us. And Absolutely. How far we go with it, we're still going to be kind of mm -hmm. in the same boat. So we, I think it's important that we keep that front and center and, and look at um, kind of solutions right. to try to improve the water loss in that area and how to maybe stop some of these birds from happening. Well, yeah, and this is, uh, honestly, the only way you're going to stop water main breaks from happening is replacing the pipes. Um, that there's, there's really not much preventative measures you can take into place. Uh, you can try and, I wish we could try and prevent the freeze and thaw from happening because then I would just keep it at the post thaw and nice and warm forever, but, but we, we, we can't do that. Uh, we can try and limit the amount of pressure swings we get in the system, which is something we're going to be doing as well this spring uh, by installing pressure relief valves on two of our meters that come from GLWA. So that should help on that. Um, but you're right. We're not going to hit the entire system. The rest of the system is going to continue to age, and it is going to break. Um, now, if you've got most of the system at 80 years to 100 years old versus 75% or 65% of the system at that age, you're going to decrease your water main breaks. Because at some point throughout the city, if you, if you look at where all the water main breaks are happening, it is all over the city. There are some significant sections, and those are the ones we're going to hit first. But then as we can continue to roll out, we'll continue to work using, using a data-driven approach, right? Looking at where the water main breaks are happening, where the worst ones are happening, so that we can continue to address and move forward. So 
as I was saying, we've got our Hennessy team here to, to um, help show the the project and the, the program that we've we've established and put you know we're putting forward here. Uh, we also have our financial team here that can answer any questions on the bonding and any of the the nitty gritty because I know just enough to really mess it up. So. So if you guys, if Hennessy, if you guys want to come up and kind of explain a little bit of the what went into um, how we came up with the program. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Um, what we did was we took about a decade worth of uh, main break information and data, um, gridded the city out, and, and found the, the the sections that had the most water main breaks. Um, and we decided that uh, a systematic approach, trying to go after the worst areas first, would pr probably be the best way to handle it. So um, we compiled the data, um, added all the main breaks up, and then started taking measurements of how much pipe we could replace in, in these sections, and tried to keep it in, 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 a, in a fashion that when you're replacing it, keeping your mobilization down, keeping your cost keeping it as efficient as possible so as you go through the city you're not jumping all over the place and you know that cost has a cost to it so that's that's how the, the board that has all the dots on it is representing the uh, the main breaks by year so that's how we that's how we came up with the uh, areas to go after to get the most uh, get the most reduction for for the investment that you're going to get um, so as you can see in the, in the outside board there, sections uh, 27 and 21, that's where the uh, 87 to 1990 water main replacement happened. Uh, would, and you can see on the, on the uh, water main break uh, board, there's pr pr practically... Uh, very, very few water main breaks in that area. So that kind of shows the effectiveness of uh, replacing the, the water mains in the, in the system, which when you start replacing these sections as you go through the city, uh, as to uh, your question about the rest of the city is going to have uh, water main break problems, that's true. But, you, you know, you, if, if you didn't go after this, this problem, uh, it would accelerate to a point that, you couldn't keep up with it. Um, as you can see, the the water main breaks that, that are that that you're having this year is, um, you know, they're way up there. And as the subsequent years continue to go, uh, that's going to be a continual problem. So as replacing this water system, like Mr. Kazan said, um, it's a place to start, and it gets you get you in six years to a, a place where. Uh, as, as you can see on the information, we put some values to like what what it means in real real money to uh, what what you're going to see as far as reductions in water main breaks, uh, how much uh, how cost effective it is, you know where you're going to retain some revenue, and uh, you know gives you some kind of idea of, of uh, what your investment in the system is going to produce. Questions or the chair? Sure. The, what is the material used? I mean, can we can we expect another hundred years once this is done out of these water mains? Yeah, more than that. Uh, life, yeah, the products now HTP uh, C900, which is a PVC water main. Their their life expectancies far exceed, you know, a hundred years. I mean, they're they're like 500 year life expectancies on that product. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. They, unless you have some kind of situation where you have a contaminated ground situation that would affect the pipe, but that's that's uh, kind of like if you're in industrial applications or some things of that nature. What about the ones that were done in 87, 94? Them will, them will uh, primarily be uh, ductile iron, uh, which is a woven type of flexible pipe, but the... Uh, the product ductile iron is a very expensive product in today's you know market, and uh, they didn't have the the plastics available that they do now. 
for water replace system replacement. What would be the life expectancy for that? For duct years? Yeah, ductile iron is probably 150 years. Uh, you all set? I'm all set. That was good. I'd love that answer. <laughs> um, yeah, so also something we looked at is is uh, another issue that that faces the city, and we, we didn't want to get too too far into the uh, off line, but uh, the lead line sir, lead line replacement is an issue confronting the city also. So we looked at that uh, also in, in our um, process for deciding where to go to, as we're going through replacing the mains, you're going to be replacing these lead service lines. So it's kind of like you're in a situation where you're going to be accomplishing two things at one time. And uh, we, I took uh, and put a, at the top of one of these uh, boards, I think it says it on that one there, you know, the estimated wood lead lines in each <coughs> section and and in six years it, it accumulates to like 1300 lead lines that will be replaced which i think you're required to, to replace about 200 and some change a year right now so that will that will also help you comply with that that function also which is which is pretty pretty good Question to the chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, when, are these water mains all underneath the road, or are they in the easement? Um, it's a combination. Some some are like right on the edge. Some are in. Some are out. But uh, yeah, they're they're predominantly, I would say, in or on the edge of of the roads. Yeah. So that would have to be some sod and grass replacement, correct? Then, because it'll be right on the. I don't know if the curb the curb will probably come out right when you're doing the water main in the street. Well, probably, yeah, probably when we look at uh, the process of changing out, if you have room under the sidewalk or in the easement, actually remove the main from under the road. So in the future, you don't have to tear, deal with that. Okay. Yeah, try to try to you know we'll try to get them out of the road as much as possible wherever you can do that. Are those lead lines, through the chair, are those lead lines, they're going from the stop box all the way to the meter in the house, right? So you have to dig or what do you call it? They, there's a machine that does drill it. Them. They drill them. them. Yeah, they'll, they'll generally directional drill it right to the house drill, from the yeah. water main, yeah. Now, is that going to, uh, that will tear up the grass a little bit, right? Yeah, usually um, the person on the short side uh, which the short sides, the water main side, the water mains on the house is on the same side. Mm -hmm. You know, they get you know excavation in the front yard plus up by the house. Right. Long sides generally just up by the house. Uh, you know, the curb stop usually gets changed out in the process. So there's usually two excavations on each on each hole, or each home or property. To the chair, what's the current projected cost for the lead line, though, to be replaced? I don't know if that's in this for the water mains, too, or this is just a water main, and we're going to do the lead line. But I know the lead line's expensive just to do yeah, that. Yeah, it will be part of the process of changing the mains out because you have okay. to change them out. When you change the mains out, you can't. But generally speaking, uh, you, during the water main change out process, they're changing the service lines uh, as part of the bid. So you usually, you know, because of the quantities, you get a, a really better rate than when you just go after the, the line itself. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Steve? No, not unless you guys have something else. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Well, I think it might be appropriate to kind of have our, our financial team lay out the process that we would have to follow, how this would all work, timing, all of that. Well, yield the floor. Good evening. Steve Mann with Miller Canfield. We serve as a bond counsel to the city. 
if the council decides that you want to move forward with the, the voter general obligation bond issue, the process would be to determine the size uh, of the project, the maximum not to exceed bond amount. And then we would prepare a resolution for council to approve, which authorizes the ballot language, much like you did for your roads program. And then the ballot will be before the voters. You, have, you currently have three uh, elections to choose from May, August, or November. And your language would need to be ballot need to be certified at least 12 weeks before the election cycle. And if the proposal was approved by voters, then you'd be authorized to issue the bonds. And again, much like the roads, we would <clears throat> work with your engineers to determine how much of the project you could complete within a three-year period. Because once you issue the bonds, you spend the proceeds within a few years. And we have a couple of series of issues. It's probably two series uh, to cover the five or seven new construction the project. That's a high overview of the bond issues process. Interest rates are how we market our solid bonds. Good to chair, if I may. Yes, sir, go uh, we have a bond out already for the roads, though, right? We took a twenty million bond out. Where are we at with that? Do you know, or is I mean, are we halfway there, or we're still? <laughs> that's what I'm kind of asking. We. Uh, Bobby Benzinski, Benzinski and Company. Um, I was going to call the city manager and the controller tomorrow to discuss a sale date. Uh, I know that they've been very busy with this project. We've seen many emails over this. Uh, so I didn't want to bother him, but um, we hope to come to market within the next two or three weeks for the second series of the road project. And that will be how much we're going to bond? 6.9 million. 6.9. So through the chair, we'll have that part to bond with whatever interest rate we're talking about right through the market or however right. you guys the, do it. When we, when we receive the bids in two to three weeks, we will know what the interest rate is at that time. Okay. Um, we would follow kind of the same process um, once the water bond proposal passes. Um, as Mr. Mann indicated, we would try to sizes to how much you could spend in a two and a half to three year period and then sell a series of bonds just like the road project you you don't know your interest rates until you actually sell the bonds so if interest rates rise you pay a higher rate if interest rates go down you pay a lower rate through the chair where do you decide as professionals the interest rate is too high because I know the Fed is going to start raising it again and that affects the borrowing on the little guys down here. What I'm getting at is when you're putting the bonds in the market and some outlaying it, you know, because people are going to go, well, I'll buy, I'll buy them, but I want to get this interest rate. I mean, right. is there a bottom line or top line or you just so, sell the dice because <laughs> of the market? So what we've done with the last road project is we've done it as what we call a private placement. Okay. So we have a select group of bidders that it goes to that uh, bids on that type of bond issue, the size, uh, the security, the unlimited tax pledge behind the bonds, the length of the bonds, things of that nature, the purpose of the bonds. And they have until a certain time and a certain date to submit their interest rates. We as your financial advisor make a recommendation to the administration as to you know whether to accept or reject that bid. Um, and we provide a comparison to what other bids in the market on that given day or the day before as to where interest rates are. Um, obviously with um, a voted unlimited tax bond, um, I, I don't mean this the way it's going to sound, so let me explain before you all gasp, but <laughs> the interest rate is what it is and yeah. you have the ability to levy a tax yeah. to pay that. If you were doing the revenue bond approach, we would have to look at that number and say, wait a minute, we don't have rates in place to cover that, so we might have to downsize the bond issue. You would not have to do that with an unlimited voted bond issue. If your rate came in at, you projected at four and it came in at four and a quarter because of market conditions, you know, we would recommend you accept it, but you have the ability to, to repay that bond issue. 
Okay, the last question to the chair. Then basically, because we're going the unlimited, it, it basically goes uh, through the taxpayers. So like you explained, the rate would, if it's within reason, would be acceptable. And then we just have to raise the rate uh, on the return to you or whoever on the taxpayers. Am I correct? Somehow. So, so we're that? under an unlimited tax bond issue. Um, the city looks at uh, what their debt service payment is on the bonds for the next year. And then, you know, on July 1, they, deter, uh, they take the taxable value divided by the dollar amount needed to meet the debt service obligation, convert that to a millage, which is, you know, $1 per $1,000 of taxable value, and then that goes on a tax bill. And then we schedule the payments when we do the bond issue so that when the tax money comes in around September 1st, September 15th, you probably have a payment in October, and then in the following April, you would have another payment, and then you levy again. I mean, this, right. and it, uh, if your taxable value goes up, the millage rate goes down. If it uh, goes down, your millage rate goes up. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? <coughs> Questions? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. James, what was next? Or I mean, that's that's the the program essentially in a nutshell here. Um, I think might be a good opportunity for you guys to. I know you guys have seen some of the stuff, but uh, it's still pretty fresh. But you guys might have some reactions, some some thoughts. And then also maybe, since we have a little bit of public, maybe some public comment. Um, anyone? Anyone from council first? Very no. none, to go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, Jason Bear, a resident. I had a clarif clarification question. You said in the years 23 and 24, two five miles per year being paid by ARPA fund, and then you said this project was five years at six miles. Is that five years after those two years? So it'd be a total, you know, a total of a, you know, instead of. 30 miles over, it, it would be 40 miles. No, it was actually just a typo. So it's two and a half miles each year for the first two years. So that's five miles, and then it should be about 25 for the next five years. So a total of 30. Okay. Good evening, Madam Council. Richard Kudrick. I'm not I got confused on something. You're talking about replacing the, the the water lines. Is there a liner that could be put inside the, the the water line cheaper than replacing the water line? So lining is a is a project, um, and actually we're currently looking at that for the Fort Street. Um, I don't know that it's exactly cheaper, depending on circumstances. Um, but it is less invasive, which is why you've seen, if, if you've been right now on Allen Road and Southgate between, say, about 75 and down to Pennsylvania, you, the, the work they're doing there is they're lining it instead of full replacement because of the invasion of a full replacement. But to, if you don't have, it, it, and we've got the engineers here who can, who they're, they're actually engineers on that project as well, but I think the cost is pretty close right now between the two. Okay, if you're talking about replacing the water lines and you're taking out curbs, I understand that every tree existing in the easement belongs to the city, regardless of who planted it. Any possibility you're going to be killing trees? And if you do, what's your replacement plan? I don't believe we're going to be killing trees considering we, we've our past practice lately has been to install water main under the sidewalk and not the easement there well the trees are in the easement you know i'm sure the, i'm sure the roots go in both directions to the sidewalk and the curb 
I want to. I own a house with lead pipes. If you ever get around to replacing the lead pipes in my house, are you damaging my property to do this? And who's going to pay for it? We handle the restorations for the for those projects. <laughs> Restoration means you are going to damage my property, and then you're going to fix it. I yes. I mean, it's not going to be damaged, but yeah, we're going to we're going to disturb dirt. We're going to disturb uh, lawn, driveways. I'm concerned about a driveway much much more than a lawn. Well, I'm hopeful we won't have to go and and tear up a driveway, but we do restore well the driveways. It's nice I'm to get an answer to that question before you come up with with a backhoe. Thank you. Through the chair, Your Honor. James, have we have we disturbed any driveways yet? Not, not to our knowledge. Okay, is there uh, any? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just one more question. Okay. <laughs> Since Mr. Kudrat brought up the uh, uh, relining, does the relining will that have a life expectancy equal to uh, total replacement? It's it's a bit less. Um, what, what do we say? 50 years. Oh, yeah. Um, still significant, right? But um, not as much as full replacement. Okay, anything further? Through the, I guess we go on the, I'm sorry. Is it the council or the residents, Your Honor? Whichever. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Lisa, could you tell us what the actual. Uh, I guess uh, the houses, I guess, uh, for example, mine's estimated 130, but it, we only pay half of that, right? And it's, it's so whoever has the, this 60,000 is based really on a house that's roughly worth 130 or 120, am I correct? Is what, what James was saying, okay. And the taxes, we would uh, notify the resident and then the, whoever pays the taxes for the resident would pay into the city, like the mortgage company or the individual. Is that about right? Okay. Thank you. That's all I got. Okay. Hearing anything further, the business of the study session is concluded, and we will adjourn at um, six fifty-one. Well, Everybody, I apologize. I was late. I had a family issue that I had to deal with. So when you go to farm taxes, how much time?